the transactions on free Wi Fi okay. because it is very easy for you to be hooked at that level. In addition, what will happen when you're on free Wi Fi, you get all these pop ups because it's free. Yeah. So mm. these pop ups will say allow. By mistake, you can click allow, even if you intend to say do not allow. So that is, this is where now the criminals will direct you to that back alley okay. on that site that is not secure, where they, then you can have your information compromised. Because all that they need, they just need your information and go on to shop online, to do everything that is online with your credentials. Can you tell us uh, how safe it is uh, uh, to transact then on ATMs? Um, ATMs are safe. Sure. Um, it, it, the, the challenges that we have normally, it's rare to have an incident in Swaziland. It's only when people are traveling outside the country. Okay. But now we're saying we're on lockdown, so there'll not be a lot of traveling. Sure. However, when you are at your ATM, wanting to transact. We are saying, when you are there as a client, you own that ATM. No one else is supposed to be close okay. next to you. Mm -hmm. Even a family member is not supposed to be next to you at the ATM. At times, you might even be offended when the security guard starts removing maybe even your spouse next I... to you while at the ATM. Uh -huh. So as banks were saying, at the time you are transacting, you own this machine. Okay. And as a, a client, you should know how your machine looks like. You know where the, cap, the, the keypads are, you know where the, the slot is, you know, all those things it should be familiar. And you know, now, this ATM has a different look to it. Okay. Uh, it looks different. You'll be thinking, oh, it's an upgrade. No. If you find an ATM that looks has a different look to it, we're saying, abandon that ATM. Because when a bank makes an upgrade, it mm. notifies their client. I see. If you touch the keypads, on the ATM and they sound a bit loose or there's a sound on it abandon mm. that ATM that okay. ATM may have been compromised I but see. we're saying this is not common in Swaziland this is this happens very often in our neighboring countries sure 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 now tell me sometimes that there, there, there are people who are good Samaritans and they they might you know uh, uh, come to assist you if you are stuck somehow uh, by the ATM what can you say about that um, if you are stuck at an ATM if you try to transact and there's a problem with the ATM, the basic rule is abandon that ATM. You cancel your transaction and you call the bank. You call the number that is on the ATM. Do not accept any help from strangers. We've had many cases outside the country where is actually um, a group of people that are trying to lure you to, to intercept your banking. So avoid any assistance in ATM. Thank you very much, Palele. It's been good to... Uh, to uh, here on this interview and that you have given uh, a clear explanation to the public out there. Your last words, please. Thank you very much. What we'd like to say is that stay safe. Remember, your password is yours. Do not share it. Most importantly, always, always use secure sites for any, any form of transaction or any form of site that you want to access. Be cyber aware. Be cyber smart. Asigwe mugele mbugeli ehlelwe ni e home study. Losambi kwa kumu no kwa azi wakasha mini. Mbugeli sitanza kutoli saka kulu kupene tingi nga ngetinsambo tetfu. Ganzike sifu ndu se additional mathematics se liba ngale mfika. Sita ukubega naso esi katinle sitago. Nese kati sa manje sita ufunza sona siswati se liba nga lelishumi na gunye. Ganye na e si mamile masugu. Si mamile asigwe mugele ehlelwe ni unja na mwishu. Nyabonga nogwazi, e, nyapila. <laughs> nyapila e. na Miss Mamile. E, si Mamile, na msa sita ufunza nge skati le sengrile, ganyi nge skati le stawo. Iye, bo nogwazi sita ufunza nge skati le sengrile, ah. nge skati le stawo. Ok, upege kuti umfunzo wako, abe afunze ni ekpele nguwa le sifunzo. Iye, bo nogwazi ekpele nguwa le sifunzo, umfunzi ni pege kuti akone kutonza. Kuti mm. ingulumo, ya kiwa nge maka Mm. Nala o makamale shugene, akiwa nge kishanganisa, e, da kile titite. Lestibita mm. nge guzi, e, da kile toti ngeenye. Lugunye mfunza, ufunza, apenza funza nge guu, kwa ka imi isho. Mwapela soya, soya ati guzi la makam, atala nzima ipi, emshwe. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. As bonga ka kulus mamile. September ni wusi umfunzi so slung sele sfundwa sake. So mwa kala sfundwa sako smamile. Yebom bege nesfundwa sate for sana mutla. Sta ukala nge kutsi si buge imi komo. Yes fundwa set mfunzi. Ekpelen wa le si fundwa mfunzi. Ni begi ile kutsi ukone. Gukaza. Sendo. Kutsi sipsi piskati. Ukone mfunzi wami. Guniga. Tin shobo teskati. Le sengile na le stako. Ukone gukaza. Imi tonvo. Le vedwa mule tin shobo teskati. Le sengile na le stako. Ubuye ukone mfunzi. Ukaza sakiwo. Sale tin shobo teskati. Le sengile na le stago. Uvuma negupiga. Ubuye usebendi sesendo le sigleti. Le sigleti le sengile na le stago. Emshwen. Gwa kina mfunzi. Ukone kushlashela. Tendo. Pela mfunzi umaslashela. Tendo. Sisuge skipa taki. Siti kaza. Kutiti yini. Singa la tubegi ke mfunzi nesifunfo setu. Asa sibiele mufa, sibuge lesa sigufunzi ile, nge sika, se sifunzi nse tule sen lulile. E sifunzi nse tule sen lulile mfunzi, sifunzi ile guti, si sendo, si asikomba sikati. Satibona, tin shlobo te sikati, guti tinzatfu. Gune sikati sanyalo, gune sikati lesengile, gune sikati lesdako. Sasa ke mfunzi, si akila, e sikati nsanyalo. Sabuga nekseba ndagu aso, neti konzi so mfunzi. Guvuma, negu pika. As tubegege mfunzi, sibuge guti. Gule sifungu le senjulile, saatfolani, neskati sanyalu. Nangu mtwebo wa mfunzi le mfuna ubone. Lo mtwebo lo na mfunzi, usifinyeto, sale sigufunzi le neskati. Sibonile guti skati sanyalu. Sibonile mfunzi guti skati sanyalu. Sesugene gabili. Gune lshobo lolwe luliwe. Gube ne lshobo lolu finyetiwe. Lshobo lolu luliwe. Sasho satisibona gala nesaki ya. Lshobo lolu finyetiwe lona lutele saki. Na titibone lutami mfunzi nye ahamba. Ngalana nye ahamba kusasa. Gute saki lesisibona ako. Mfunzi. Astube kege sibuge mfunzi guti. E, uma. Se sebenda nesitonzi so skat si sanyalo si sebenda ganjani. As pinza sibuge nangu umtwebo mfunzi. Lo umtwebo lona usifinyeto. Sale sigufunzi ile nge tikonzi iso. Sitite mfunzi tikonzi iso. Tesendo tishuge nega tatu. Gukona sitonzi so lesi nga inzawo. Gube kona sitonzi so lesi sendega. Gube kona sitonzi so lesi tubega hako. Sasbona mfunzi stonzi so lesi nga inzao. Kuti sona asikazi logu nga ganani. Nge gwende kwa sendo. Sia fanana ne sendo lesi saskati nsanyalo. Sa kubega sabuga stonzi so lesi sendega. Sabona kusi stonzi so lesi sendega. Sisi chela kusi sendo lebe sinye ndegi se siye ndega. Sisebendi sasaki se. Gani umasipiga sisebendi sasaki sa. Sengi ya hamba. Benga hambi mfunzi. Kotwa sengi ya hamba. Sendo, segu hamba, sestali ile kwendega. Angi sa hambi. Benga hamba, kufanyalo, angi sa hambi mfunzi. Kwe kina mfunzi, stonzi so, lesikube gago. Sasbona guti so, na mfunzi. Sischela guti. Sendo siya kubega ni kwendega. Sibona gala ngesaki, sa mfunzi. Sibona gala ngesaki sa mfunzi. Le siba sembigwe msuga we sendo. Umasa spiga, sipige ngesaki se. Nisa hamba. Sendo samse kamba siya kubega. Nisa ngaga hambi. Sendo samse kunga hambi na aso mfunzi siya kubega. As kubega mfunzi, singe ni esfunzi wenu setu sana mula. Si kubega ni kubuga skati. Si ta ubuga mfunzi, Sikati lesa ngile na lesa dako. Gotwa sita hukala nge kubuga sikati lesa ngile. Buga na imisho ya ami mfunzi. Unagete endo kule misho. Koko ulile. Tinvombi beti shuka. Tinvombi tipumile idolo. Davide 
wambula la goliad. Asas pins and phones. Go, go, ulile. Din hombi, beti shuka. Din hombi, dipumile itolo. Davide, wambula la goliad. Yomine mfunzi le mishole. Ikomba gutsi le sendo, se sende gile. Nogo, ngeti katsi le tehlugile. Umusho, A, B, na C. Uya komba kusi sendo, se sende gile. Gotwa, aguga peli, si katsi le siteni, sende gile. Gutfu, te wendega kwaso. Si kubege mfunzi, si buge, umusho wetfu D. Davide, wambula la goliati. Siyabona mfunzi, sepele skatsi le sitze. Gakulu, sendo, sende gile. Wambula la gatseni, Davide, goliati. Asistube gege mfunzi, sibuge guti. Logu gusichelani, ne skatsi le sengile. Logu mfunzi, gusichela guti skatsi le sengile. Sehugene gabili. Gukona le sanza gwenga. Gukona le senga gateni. Logu mfunzi sigubona ngeguti. Nai imisho yetu le mitatu. Imisho yetu le mitatu. Yona e, istiela guti le sendo le sanza gwenga. Gani leo wekina ustiela guti le sendo gate sendega. No loas. Smamile engda utela kutsi tateli kefu ganane. Esta upinza sboye mabe ugatle na logo. Yes. Ok. Mbugeli ngela tateli kefu siyabu ya kuna manja. It is now our daily talk. It is now our everyday breaking news. I think it's high time we all come together and make sure we bring an end to this. Because we can't sit down while it's still taking over. Let's all follow all the precautions given by the health department so that we can protect ourselves and also protect others. I just wash my hands before I touch. I just close my mouth before I cough. And I just close my mouth before I sneeze. And now I'm go to parties, that's a risk, yeah, yeah. I see, I see, I wash my hands before I touch. I see, I see, I close my mouth before I cough. I see, I see, I close my mouth before I sneeze. I see, I see, I don't go to parties, that's a risk. I see, I see, people going through a lot. I see, I see, coronavirus is a threat. I see, I see, I don't go to parties, that's a risk. I see, I see, I close my mouth before I cough. In case you're wondering, just wash your hands in case you handle things and then keep an eye. If you sneeze or cough, gotta keep it covered, I mean. Who am I? Just a person living when I see you living cause I value life. That's what you need, raise up, we gon' fight and conquer cause we really got this. I see, I see, I wash my hands before I touch. I see, I see, I close my mouth before I cough. I see, I see, I close my mouth before I sneeze. I see, I see, I don't go to parties, that's a risk. Really believe that some of the people you know can never be trusted at all. You gotta be cautious, wash your hands more often, can trust everything that we touch. And when you sneeze, you gotta make sure you cover your mouth, but not with your hands. Cause you do not know who you gonna touch or what you have touched before all of that. Avoid meeting up with too many people For your own good and everyone else You gotta make sure you keep it all clean Watch how you maneuver, look after yourself A hand sanitizer won't kill you Make sure that you use running water Just think of our brothers and sisters In the country and the ones that are outside the borders Yeah I see, I see I wash my hands before I touch I see, I see I close my mouth before I cough I see, I see I close my mouth before I sneeze I see, I see, I don't go to parties, that's a risk. Let's all come together and all say, not today, coronavirus.
asikwe mbukele mbukele ehlelwe ni i home study kanzi kule sikati sa manje sita ukubega naso sifundwa se siswati selibanga lelishumi na kunye ganye nae simamile masugu mkata sukubega simamile angpinza kwe mbukele mfunzi mfunzi nasi ya ekefini siboni ile kutisikati lesengile sehluge negabili kune sikati lesisanza kwenga kube nesikati lesenga mfunzi Sapenza sabona kuti sikhathi lesengqile sikhomba ukuthi lendlela okukhunywa ngayo seyentekile sabona kuthi ngalesinye sikhathi kungasho ukuthi lendlo isanza kwendeka babe ubulele inyonga babe ubulele inyonga akukapheli isikhathi lesitheni babe ayibulele babe wa bulala inyonga sesithi sikhathi babe ayibulala inyonga asichubeke ke mfunzi sibuke ukuthi sibona ngani sibuke sakhiwo sesikhathi lesisanza sikhathi lesisanza kwenqa mfunzi sibonakala ngetakhi letinzathu kuba nabe lone liphimbo leliphasi asiphinze mfunzi lokho sikunake be lone liphimbo leliphasi bese kuba na e Locho belelwa ekineni kwesento emva kwemsuka kube na ile naye locho belelwa emva kwesimsuka kuvuma mfunzi asibuke ke mfunzi nathi tibonelo kunali litafula leli lange ndasi sibuke kuvuma kuvuma mfunzi uma sivuma mfunzi sita usi bafunzi bafunze siswati naka mfunzi nasi sakhi sethu lo e Bafunzi be bafunza siswati. Bafunzi be bafunza siswati. Lipimbo mfunzi liyehla. Be bafunza siswati. Bafunzi ba funzile. Basifunzile siswati. Ngulo ile mfunzi. Basifunzile siswati. Leta akile eti mfunzi leti nzatu. Ngito leti sinigeta lomcondvo wekuthi lesento sisanza kwendeka noma sisanza kwenga sentekile matfute uma sasiphika ke mfunzi siphika ngetakhi tetfu letimbili siphike ngaka siphike nganga bafunzi abaka funzi abaka funzi bafunzi beba nga funzi ngiyephemba uyabona mfunzi bafunzi abaka sifunzi siswati ngiyethemba uyatibona mfunzi uyasibona lesakhiwo khumbule mfunzi ukuthi lobelo liphimbo lakhe liphasi asichubeke mfunzi sibuke lihlobo lwesibili lwesikhathi e lesengqile lesite sikhathi lesenga mfunzi wami sona ke mfunzi sikhomba ukuthi Sekuphele isikhathi lesidze sento sendekile noma lendlo lokukhunywa ngayo yenteka kadzeni khumbula sibonelo sethu Davide wambulala Goliath kadzeni mfunzi sona ke mfunzi masibuka sakhiwo saso sisebentisa sakhi a lo sesivumelwane nisenhloko lone liphimbo lelisetulu naka mfunzi Sikhatsi lesisanza kwenza liphimbo beliphasi nyalo liphimbo selisetulu mfunzi siphinze sisebentise sakhi be lone liphimbo naye lelisetulu yebo mfunzi sikhatsi lesisanza kwenza sishito sathi bafunzi bebadla bebafunza uyeva mfunzi lokuthi leliphimbo liphasi lehlile kodwa masa ngikhuluma esikhathini lesenga ngita ukuthi be badla liphimbo mfunzi lena njani liyaphakama liba setulu uma ngivuma khumbula ke mfunzi luhla lwetivumelwano tenhloko sikhathi lesenga ngiyethamba uya lukhumbula nasibuka takhi tesento lokhuluma ke mfunzi mine nga hla tsine sa hla lokhunywa naye wena wadla nine 
nahla lokhunywa ngaye sikaba wani umfana wadla bafana badla umuti washa imiti yasha lihashi ladla emabele emahashi adla sithubeke emfunzi sihlalo sawa tihlalo dawa enculeni qhubeka ke mfunzi nalo luhla ulicedzise uze ufike esigabeni segcina asichubeke ke mfunzi sibuke ke manje kutsi siphika kanjani esikhathini lesenga sikubonile kuvuma kutsi sisebentisa sivumelwano senhloko sikhathi lesenga sibuye sisebentise be lone liphimbo lelisetulu nyalo ke sesibuka sikhathi lesenga sikhathi lesenga siphika nganga mfunzi bafana bagidza ingadla bafana bagidza ingadla abagidzanga bafana abagidzanga bafunzi be babhala luhlolo be babhala luhlolo beba ngabali beba ngabali mfunzi bomake bavuna emabele bomake abawa vunanga emabele sisebentisa kanjalo mfunzi letakhi tetfu leti uma sesiphika nyalo ke mfunzi ase sihlahlele kanye kanye tento leti sesikhathini lesengcile kuleti inhlobo toti mphili nasi sento sethu sekuqala bafunze bafunze sikusiphi isikhathi Sathe mfunzi usifake emishweni kuze utokhona kutfola nesigaba. Sesikhathini lesisandza kwenca. Sisibona ngani mfunzi sisesikhathini lesisandza kwenca. Sisibona ngani asisakhi phela mfunzi lesila ekugcineni lo e. Asihambe kanye kanye ke mfunzi. Sine sakhi sethu sekuqala la ngoba lo sivumelwa no senhloko sigaba 1 bunyenti. Kulandzele funzi lo ngumsuka wesendo lone malunga lamabili uqalise ngangwaxa egcineni imfundzi sinale sakhi lesi sakhi sesikhathi lesi sandza kwenca sento sethu sesibili ladla ladla sikhathi lesi njani imfundzi lesenga sibona ngani kutsi sikhathi lesenga liphimbo leyaphakama lola sivumelwano senhloko sikhathi lesenga sigaba sesithathu bunye mfunzi ubhale kuphelele mfunzi wami ungagcini njengoba ukuthi sivumelwa no senhloko bese siba nemsuka lolunga linye sibe nesijobelelo sesento lokungu a sento sethu sekugcina mfunzi akakavuni make akakavuni yebo mfunzi sisesikhathini lesisandza kwenca usho kahle kunalo a lo sakhi sekuphika kube nalo ga lona mfunzi akasuye lona lo sakhi sekuphika lo ga utambona ngani ukuthi akasuye lo lo sakhi sekuphika utawubona ngeke siso ugucule uthi a li ga ali kahle li hash uyabona ukuthi lo ga lo uyagucuka ingako ke mfunzi sesita lo ga lo sivumelwa no senhloko sigaba sekuqala a bunye loka ke mfunzi lo wesibili sakhi sekuphika sikhathi lesisandza kwenca sibe nemsuka wethu umfunzi lone malunga lamabili uqalise ngangwaxa kugcine sakhi sethu sekuphika i mfunzi wami ngethemba sihlahlele kanye kanye mfunzi asichubeke mfunzi sibuke sikhathi lesidako sikhathi lesidako mfunzi ihlobo lethu legcina lwesikhathi Sikhathi lesidako umfundzi asesinake na imisho. Gogo utawubuya kusasa. Ngita ngito khuluma naye nakabuya. Ngiya ushada nasengkhulile. Timbuti takithi tiyotfolakala ngalelinye lilanga. Yebo umfundzi yomine lemisho yamle. Isa sikhathini lesidako. Yomine ikhomba kutsi lokho lokukhulunywa ngako 
kusenga gende gimfunzi. Kusenga gende. No, kule tikati, atifanani. Asasi mbuge umusho A na P. Koko uta ubuya kusasa. Siyabona kusisegu tfute kubuya kwa koko. Nito kuluma na ye na kabuhi. Kutfute kukuluma kwa mna ye. Gani umusho si na D. Siyabona kutingia ushata na sankulili. Kushata kwa mimfunzi kuseka shana. Timbu titagiti. Tio tfola gala. Kuseka shana. Utfola gala kwa timbu titagiti. Yebo mfunzi. Logu mfunzi wami. Guyas kombisa. Guti sikati le sitago. Naso sechuge negabili. Njengo basubo nile gile misho li langel. Beikona le mibili. Le komba kuti gutu dane. Gwendega kwa le sendo. Le minye le mibili. Beikomba kuti kusakashane. Gwendega kwa le sendo. Yebo mfunzi. Le tinshobo ke mfunzi sikati. Le sita ufiga. Nesi kati, lesi ya ufiga. Lesi lesi ya ufiga, si kwamba kuti, gutfute, gwende la kwe sendo. Lesi lesi ya ufiga, si kwamba kuti, kukashane, gwende la kwe sendo. Ni ya ushata, nasa nkulili. Mfunzi, asukale nge kubuga, si kati lesi ya ufiga. Na raga mfunzi na hii imisho, si kati lesi ya ufiga. Tine sita uhamba ekseni. Tine sita uhamba ekseni. Unagena titaki njile ngitika misili. Lenja. Aitu ibamba inyamadani. Lenja. Aitu ibamba inyamadani. Sikubege mfunzi. Mage sitombona usasa. Babe aganoya embabani. Yebo mfunzi, sikati le sita ufiga, sibonile kusisikomba kusisegu sonzele, kwende kakwa le tendo, le tile tila ule misho. Sibugage mfunzi, sakiwo, sale, sikati le sita ufiga. Sisibona ngani? Umasivuma mfunzi, sibona gala, ngetaki, dau, do, na da. Asipinza mfunzi, Dau, do, na da. Gute, do. Gute, do, mfunzi. Gute, loku. Na titibonelo, si dau, jabula. Nidam, chela. Nibato, kuluma. Gani mfunzi, umasa sipiga. Gubona gala, ngedaki, sipiga ngesaki, no. Tu na ngege. Sita uchabula, asitu chabula. Angino mchela. Angege bakulume. Nye tamba samba kanye kanye mfunzi wa mekaya. Asitubegege mfunzi. Sibuge lhobo, lwe sibili. Lwe sikati genyalo. Le stago, le siti, sikati, le siya ufiga. Na kage mfunzi tendo kuna imisho ya mle mibili. Tuli uya ushada na 2025. Zodwa uyo pasa angatatisha. Siyabona mfunzi tuyo mibili le misho le. Kushada kwa tuli guse kashane ni kwendega. Ganyane kupasa kwa zodwa. Kukashane. Njongo ba angatatisha nje. Na atike mfunzi taki deskati lesi ya ufiga. Kuna ya u, kube na yo, gufuma. Gupiga, kuna yu, kube na ngege. Asbuke tibone lota mfunzi. Ba ya u kiza. Gufuma, umasipiga, ngege, ba kiza. Ba yo kiza. Aba yu kiza. Nia temba mfunzi uyabona, uyeshuge nisa. Nala hapa mfunzi, gude yu. Gude yu mfunzi. Nina niaibesa niashoniti, angiyo mbona, 
ase isho kanjalo umfunzi asasibuka ke mfunzi sesigcina kuhlahlela tibonelo tesikhathi lesi lesidako sicale mfunzi nganasi sento setho sekucala bayawugidza sikhathi lesi yawufika bayawugidza sibona ngani phela mfunzi sibone nganasi sakhi mfunzi wami yawu kutsi sikhathi lesi yawufika ba sivumelwa no senhloko sigaba sekucala bunyenti yawu ngiso phela lesi sakhe sesikhathi lesi yawufika lesi sinika lomcondvo wekuthi sekutfute kwendeka kwale sendo bese siba nemsuka wethu lone malunga lamabili lokuqalisa ngangwaxa sigcine ngesijobelelo sesendo mfunzi mfunzi wam nasi sendo sethu sesibili uyophasa lo yophasa sibona ngani mfunzi ukuthi lesikhathi lesi sikhathi lesi yawufika sibona ngalo ukuthi kukhashane phela mfunzi lokwendeka kwale sendo Uya uphasa na sakale kudadisha. Nje ngoba ngadadisha nje angeka phasa. Sibona ngale sakhi sethu umfunzi. Kuna u usivumelwa no senhloko sigaba sekucala a bunye. Kube na yo lo sakhi sethu sesikhathi lesi yawufika. Ngethembu yamkhumbula umfunzi. Bese kuba nemsuka wethu la umsuka lone malunga lamabili lokuqalisa ngangwaxa sigcine ngesijobelelo mfunzi asasithathe nangu umsebenti ubhale phasi mfunzi lo msebenti bhala tinhlobo tesikhathi lesengcile unike tibonelo bhala umcondvo lovetwa sikhathi lesitawufika bese ke mfunzi uhlahlela tento nathi letidvetshelwe kunayi imisho inja ihle tinkhukhu indvotsa igawula yagawula sihlahla tsine siyawufundza nakuvulwa tikolwa bona batawuhamba kusasa mfunzi esifundweni sethu sanamuhla sibuke tinhlobo letimbili tesikhatsi sibuke sikhatsi lesengcile sabuka sikhatsi lesidako Sabona tinhlobo tesikhatsi lesengcile saphindze sabona tinhlobo tesikhatsi lesidako sabuka takhi sabuka kuvuma nekuphika kanye nemicondvo levetwa mle tinhlobo kulolo nalolo hlobo mfunzi sihlahlele kanye kanye ngiyethemba mfunzi wami kuthi e usitakele sisafundza lesifundvo sethu sanamuhla Siyabonga siyabonga kakhulu simamile sethemba nekuthi umfundzi usithokotela isifundo sanamuhla kanti futhi sithemba sizidabona sizidabona nethundweni letlandzelako Yes yes siyabonga kakhulu mbukeli ekhaya uma ngabe ufundza libanga lemfica utawuthokota kakhulu ukuthi sifundo sakho se additional mathematics sitawulandzela ngensimbi yesihlanu kanti kule sikhathi samanje ngiyaphinze ngibuye futhi kanye naso sifundo selibanga lelishumina kunye i religious knowledge siyabuya khona manje Bonana, we are going to get the Okay, Maggie. Tabo 70 cents. I'm going to 77 dollars. Tanja Tamitite Umshaba Musnolas. What's Tanja Takotite Umshaba Musho with a gangle? Who made a Tanja City Kes and Charong and Zipon and Mandla Amba was cut less than 20 seconds. Jango Bawas Funs is a teach. Connor Toys to Gabungol and the Maguan and Awanga. Tabo. Tell us this war for Pilashi. Come to our good Tanja Utikes and Zipo and in a Mandila Sobid is a cut less than 20 seconds. Mauto Gula. Mauketa kusebenzi sa umtoi, mauketa kutsinza tiluani. No mama mauketa kushinjali na mugi. Kume lefuta sisiende imitoi neti nzau le sibu donga lugu bula la imakiwan.
Sanbonani. Sawbu ile baba. Welcome back to our viewers. This is Home Study. You are still tuned in on Eswatini TV. My name is Noa Zilamini and at this moment we are doing Form 5 Religious Education with Tulisile Vilagati. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm okay, Nobazi. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you very much. Thank I you. understand today we're doing Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Did yes. I say that right? Yes. Okay, what are you expecting your Form 5 learner to have learned by the end of this lesson? Okay, a very good afternoon, my dear learners at home, and a welcome to the religious education lesson. As Nogazi has just said, the topic of the day is Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, and the outcome of the lesson is actually it's a continuation of Philip's ministry in Samaria. So we want to give you an in-depth understanding while actually tracing how the gospel reached to non-Jewish places. So make sure that you have your <coughs> your learning resources with you, which is the RSV Bible, your learner's book, your notebook, and your pen. All right, thank you very much for that, Tulsile. And just a reminder to our from five learners that we are live on YouTube and on Facebook right now. And if you have any questions, please feel free to use our WhatsApp number. Also, another reminder that our from three lesson additional mathematics will be right after this lesson. So do not worry about that. Thank you very much, uh, Tulsile. You may uh, actually begin your lesson. Thank you very much, Nogazi. Um, here are the lesson objectives, my dear Lena. Uh, by the end of this lesson, we are expecting you to be able to narrate Philip's encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch. You should be able to explain the significance of uh, Philip's encounter with the eunuch. You should be able to analyze the character of Philip and that of the Ethiopian eunuch. You should also be able to explain the lessons drawn from Philip's encounter with the eunuch. And then lastly, you should be able to explain what this story reveals about the way members of the early church spread their faith or the gospel. And then my dear Lena, just a brief introduction uh, to, to, to the story. First of all, let us look at the word eunuch. What is a eunuch? The denotational meaning of the word eunuch is a castrated man. A eunuch is a castrated man. And then who was this eunuch that we are talking about in the story? He is described as a, a minister of the Candace, minister of the Candace, which is the queen of the Ethiopians. And he's a man in charge of all her treasure, which means that this man was actually a treasurer. He's a man of high, he's a man of high status. And then about Ethiopia, because we are told that he was from Ethiopia. Ethiopia is described as an ancient African nation south of Egypt. It was controlled by Egypt until after the time of David in 1000 BC. And we are told, my dear Lena, that the distance from Jerusalem to Ethiopia is approximately 750 miles, which when converted to kilometers is 1,207 kilometers. Noazi, you have something to say? All right, thank you, uh, Tulsile. I, uh, do you mind if we take a bit of an informational break? Yes, it's okay, okay Noazi. Okay, thank you very much. Viewers, we'll be right back right after this infomercial. Chance now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs> Hand washing is one of the best ways to keep from getting sick and staying healthy all the year long. Welcome back to our viewers. This is Eswatini TV. We are doing religious education with Tulisile Vilagati right now, four from five. Tulisile, I'll let you continue with your lesson. Thank you very much, Nogwazi. 
before the break, my dear Lena, we were actually looking at the background of Ethiopia. And the last point that we looked at was the distance uh, between Jerusalem and Ethiopia. And we said the distance between Jerusalem and Ethiopia is uh, calculated to be appro approximately 750 miles, which when convected is uh, 1,207 kilometers, which is quite a very long distance, my dear Lena. And we are going to see in the story that the eunuch travels from Ethiopia to Jerusalem. Uh, to worship and then also about Ethiopia we are told that Old Testament prophets record co God's concern about the Ethiopians uh, go and read the story in An Amos chapter 9 verse 7 and also they were promised that they would be included among those who came to Jerusalem to worship uh, which is found in Psalms chapter 68 verse 31 and Isaiah 45 verse 14 please go and read those uh, scriptures my dear Lena. So here we are actually saying the Ethiopian eunuch going to Jerusalem for worship was something that was prophesied by prophets in the Old Testament because it was said that even Ethiopians would be included among those who came to worship in Jerusalem. Also of note is that Ethiopians were known for their military prowess. Go and read Jeremiah 46 verse 9 and Second Chronicles Chapter 12, verse 3, they were known for their military prowess. They somewhere where we are told that they were raging with horses. So they are known for their military prowess. And then, my dear Lena, another place that I want us to look at is Gaza. Gaza. It is the last town before the desert road to Egypt. And then let's move to the account itself. Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. It's found in Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. Here is the story, my dear Lena. I, I know we are going to read the account, but as you read, here are areas of interest. We are told that uh, the eunuch was returning from Jerusalem, where he had gone to worship, and he was traveling along the Jerusalem to Gaza Road. And while he was traveling, the Holy Spirit led Philip and told him to go down that road. And we are told in the account, my dear Lena, that the road was a desert road. So the Holy Spirit, through the voice of the angel, commanded, instructed Philip to go down that road. And Philip, we are told in the account, he took heed of the instruction. So he went down that road. And then the eunuch was traveling in his chariot, and he was reading prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 53, verse 7. And then the spirit led Philip to go and join the eunuch in his chariot. And Philip did exactly that. And then when he found that the, 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 the eunuch was reading, Philip asked him, do you understand what you are reading? And the eunuch responds, how can I unless someone guides me? And then the eunuch invites Philip to join him and to interpret the scripture for him. And we are told, my dear Lena, that the scripture was about the suffering servant. The scripture in Isaiah uh, 53 verse 7 was about the suffering servant. And here is the scripture, my dear Lena, it reads thus. Can you please take note of that? Because we really need the content of that scripture. The scripture reads thus. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearer is dumb. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? In his life was lifted up from the earth. That is the scripture, my dear Lena. And then the eunuch asked Philip, to whom is the prophet referring to here? Is he talking about someone else talking about himself? And then Philip began and he started with the scripture and then preached the gospel to the eunuch. And then as they went along, we are told, my dear Lena, they came along a place where there was water. And the eunuch asked Philip, see here there is water. What is to stop my being baptized? Then he commanded the chariot to stop. And then he was baptized. And then after that, we are told that Philip disappeared and the eunuch is not bothered. He continued with his journey rejoicing because he was now filled with the Holy Spirit. 
so here is the story my dear Lena here is the eunuch as you can see this is an African man and look at the dress code a uh, befitting his status here is Philip they are in a chariot here is the scroll that they are reading and then we move to the significance of Philip's encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch why was it important that Philip meets the Ethiopian eunuch okay the first important my, my, my dear Lena is that this story reveals how one's hunger for God leads to salvation it reveals how one's hunger for God leads to salvation how we are told in the story that the eunuch traveled all the way from Ethiopia to Jerusalem, a distance which is about more than 1,200 kilometers. And that will probably take more, something like 30 days. And, and when you include the return, there will be two months plus. So he's hungry and thirsty for God. He goes to Jerusalem all the way from Africa to worship. And this leads to his salvation because what actually prompted the spirit to send Philip to explain the scripture to him is because of his hunger. So it's very important. Secondly, Philip's encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch is a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. How so? Remember, my dear Elena, in the previous lesson, we're looking at Philip's uh, ministry in Samaria where he preached to the Samaritans. In that account, I hope you noted, my dear Elena, that there is no special guidance for his evangelistic venture. He just flees from Jerusalem and he finds himself in Samaria and he preaches. But here we see the Holy Spirit overruling every step he takes. Remember, he's guided by the Holy Spirit to go down the road leading to Gaza. He's guided by the Holy Spirit to go and, and, and join the eunuch in the chariot. He's guided by the Holy Spirit. Actually, when he disappears at the end, he's taken up by the Holy Spirit. So this story demonstrates the power of the Holy Spirit. And also this story is a fulfillment of the Great Commission. I hope by this time you are used to this because it keeps on coming it's it's kind it's it's a it's a recurring significance so remember when jesus commanded them you shall be my witnesses in jerusalem in all judea and samaria and to the end of the earth so now we see philip preaching to a eunuch an african which means now the gospel has reached the end of the earth because even africans have now received the gospel and one thing to note at the end of the account we see philip disappearing and the eunuch genuine uh, and rejoicing and we are rest assured that when he reached his home country he told everyone about the good news about jesus christ which then means that the gospel was spread even more and then lastly my dear elena philip's encounter with the eunuch is important because it demonstrates the universalism of the gospel we are saying the gospel is universal regardless of race regardless of gender, regardless of status, regardless of social class, everyone is welcome to receive the gospel. Here we see a eunuch, a black man, an African, being included also in the gospel, which goes to show that the gospel is indeed universal. And then we move to the characterization, my dear Elena. We have two main characters in this account. We have Philip and then we have the eunuch how are they portrayed in the account in the account my dear Elena Philip is portrayed as someone who is obedient why do we say Philip is obedient he's obedient because he obeyed the Holy Spirit just just when the Holy Spirit commanded him to go down the desert road he doesn't hesitate he doesn't complain it's a desert road, as you, you, you might take note, which means that uh, no one was expected to be there. But the Holy Spirit knew that there was a man traveling along that road. So Philip obeys. We also see that Philip is knowledgeable. He's knowledgeable with scripture. Why do we say Philip is knowledgeable with scripture? Because he asked the eunuch, do you understand what we are reading? And when the eunuch admits that he doesn't understand, Philip takes his time, he expounds, he explains, he interprets the scripture for, uh, for the eunuch. And we are told that he began with 
the scripture with the passage from Isaiah and then he continues to tell the eunuch about the good news which means that he is knowledgeable and his knowledge uh, actually leads to the eunuch's repentance and then we see that he is humble look at how the, the, the eunuch orders Philip to baptize him Philip lowers himself. He's a, man, he's a man of God. He's an evangelist. He's among the deacons. They were chosen because of their qualities. But here is the eunuch. He orders him. Uh, Philip doesn't question anything. Instead, he's humble enough to do everything that the eunuch orders him to do. So he's humble. And then lastly, we see his boldness in preaching the gospel in Samaria. Remember, Samaritans and Jews were enemies. Uh, but here is Philip preaching the gospel among the Gentiles without any fear or favor and he doesn't even discriminate that these are Gentiles but he preaches with boldness and then we move to the eunuch the eunuch is portrayed as someone who is devout someone who is pious someone who is hungry for God why do we say he's hungry for God we've already mentioned my dear Lena that he traveled all the way from Ethiopia to Jerusalem uh, just to worship just to worship God. So he is he has this zeal to worship God. And he's portrayed as God-fearing. Uh, reason being that along the way, as you can see, it, it was quite a long distance. We're expecting him to be relaxing in his chariot, sleeping, but he's busy reading scripture. His speed is occupying his mind with the Lord's word, which shows how God-fearing he is. Even the fact that after... Philip had expounded the scripture for him. He asked to be baptized. He understands that in order for one's in order for one's repentance to be sealed, they have to be baptized, which goes to show that he is God fearing. Also, the eunuch is portrayed as someone who is sincere. He is very sincere and honest. Why do we say he is sincere? When Philip asks him. Do you understand what you are reading? He doesn't lie. He is sincere enough to say, how can I understand unless someone uh, ex it guides me? He could have lied uh, and, and pretend he understands. So his sincerity helps him because then Philip goes to explain. And then lastly, the eunuch is portrayed as someone who is humble. Why do we say the eunuch is humble? Remember, we described him as a minister of the Candace, a man holding such a high status in the Ethiopian palace. He was a treasurer. He was in charge of the queen's treasury. So then, but here we see him being humble enough to admit that he doesn't understand scripture. He's knowledgeable. He's a man of intellect. He's a man of wisdom because it requires one to have wisdom and great intellect to hold such a position. But he's humble enough to admit that, you know, I cannot know everything. I might be good in the financial department, but I might not be good in spiritual matters. So he is humble enough to tell Philip that he doesn't understand. And then, my dear Elena, we move to the lessons that we, we actually draw. What do we learn from this story? There are quite a number of lessons, but let's just go through this few. We learn that from, from Philip's encounter with the eunuch, we learn that we must obey God's command. We must obey God's command. That stands out in the account. We've already mentioned that Philip was instructed to go down south, the Jerusalem to Gaza road and he doesn't question that even when he sees the eunuch the spirit commands him to go and join the eunuch and he doesn't hesitate he doesn't question that instead he complies so it's very important that we imitate to emulate uh, what Philip did and obey God's command because it might lead us actually obeying God's command is for the benefit of others at times just like the eunuch who got to be uh, baptized who got to be preached at because Philip obeyed the command we also learn that scripture must be read scripture must be read the author of the book of Acts here my dear Elena makes a clear distinction of reading scripture and understanding scripture so in order for us to understand in order for us to have someone who will interpret the scripture for us it's very important that we take our time and read it is very important that we read scripture if it wasn't for the eunuch's keenness in reading scripture he wouldn't have repented so we must read scripture 
another lesson that we learn is that we should be sincere we should be sincere in order for us to get assistance it's very important to admit when we are ignorant we've given a good example of the eunuch my dear Lena, who was sincere enough to tell philip that he doesn't understand what this this scripture entails and he he gets the help that he deserves because of his sincerity so it's very important to be sincere in this story we also learn that worship is important Worship is important. Every human being is made up of this spiritual aspect that needs to be fed, to be attended to. So it's very important that we worship God. And we draw this lesson from the eunuch who traveled all the way, more than 1,200 miles, just to worship God. Worship is important. We also learn that it's very important to evangelize. We see the necessity of evangelism, the necessity of evangelism. We've said somewhere in point number two that it's important that we read scripture. But more than reading scripture, someone must be there to evangelize for us. It is for that reason that we have our, uh, our church leaders, uh, uh, our religious leaders. We have pastors, we have apostles, we have evangelists, uh, we have uh, prophets, because evangelism is very important. Then lastly, my dear Elena, we learn that baptism is necessary as a sign of repentance. Uh, it's very important that we take note. If we can look at the members of the early church, after repentance, it was a necessity that they get baptized. Why? To seal repentance. Baptism is an outward sign of repentance. So it's very important that we get baptized. In, baptism is a necessity. It's not a choice, but it's necessary. And then we also have the symbolism. The symbolism used in the story is water. Remember, my dear Elena, we said that as Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch uh, 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 were, tra were traveling in their chariots, they, they came through a place with water and the eunuch commanded that the chariot stops and he, he be baptized. And the water symbolizes purity and new life. Your sins, your sins being cleansed. And then I have this very important part of my lesson, my dear Lena, a deeper analysis of the story, which I want you to pay special attention to because we are going to apply the same skill even in other accounts in in the book of Acts, even for previous accounts. These 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 points are kind of a pattern that we will find because we, are, we will be looking at what this story reveals about the way members of the early church spread the gospel or spread their faith. So we are going to draw examples from Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. But you can also take the very same point and, and actually analyze other accounts because it applies. That is why I invite your attention, pay special attention to this one. So we are attending to the question, what does this story reveal about the way members of the early church spread the gospel? First of all, looking at this story, of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. We can tell that there was a sense of agency among the members of the early church. There was no procrastination. What do we mean by this, my dear Elena? They preached here and now. They didn't postpone. And people, those they preached to, repented immediately. So we're saying immediately here and now. There is no procrastination, unlike uh, uh, people nowadays when they are being preached at, they usually postpone. Some even have specific dates and years that I will repent when I reach 40, I will repent at this time. But looking at the early church, there was no procrastination. To them, repentance, to them, preaching was a sense of agency. For example, let us go to Acts chapter 8 verse 36, where we see the eunuch. After Philip had preached to the eunuch, he repents thereafter. And after he has repented, he sees water and he says, what can stop me from being baptized? So there is a sense of agency. There is no procrastination. Secondly, what is revealed about the way early church members spread their faith is that the evangelists explained and interpreted scriptures for new believers. They explained and interpreted scriptures for new believers believers for clarity to the new believers there was this one-on-one -on -one interaction remember my dear Lena, we are told that philip through the guidance of the holy spirit joined 
the eunuch and asked him, do you understand? And then after the eunuch had explained that he doesn't understand, we see a one-on-one -on -one interaction where Philip tries to explain to the eunuch what the scripture what the scripture means so evangelist had a task and a responsibility to explain and interpret scriptures for believers and then we also see as i've already mentioned that philip clarified the scripture which then led to the eunuch's repentance so evangelist explained and interpreted scriptures for new believers even after they had repented, they were actually groomed, they were molded in the faith. And then, thirdly, my dear Elena, what the story reveals about the way members of the early church spread the gospel, we can see that th they were not limited by place and time. It is closely linked to the first point, because in the first point we talked about sense of agency, no procrastination. So they were not limited by place and time. Anywhere the gospel was preached we are going to see that my dear Lena, even in other stories to come take for instance chapter 9 the next lesson after this one we are going to come across Saul, who is struck by lightning along the the, the road and he has an encounter with his encounter with god so they were not limited by place and time unlike us who who will uh, actually want to repent or who wants to worship in a church or in any place of worship they are not limited by place in in time anyway any time the gospel was preached anywhere any time people repented anywhere any time people were baptized and we see here the eunuch repenting and being baptized along the road so they were not limited by place and time also we see that um the members of the early church taught about jesus death and resurrection this is very key I'm sure you have seen in previous sermons, take for instance, Peter's sermons. We see him referring to Jesus' death and resurrection. And it, 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 it is so obvious, my dear Lena, there is no way one could preach without referring to Jesus' death and resurrection because it is the basis of salvation. So now we are saying, taking the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, the passage from Isaiah 53, verse 7 to 8, was used a great deal by early Christians. Why was it used by early Christians? Because it was a messianic prophecy. Remember in Isaiah, my dear Elena, Jesus, uh, we, we don't have Jesus there, but the prophet Isaiah was prophesying that one day there shall be a Messiah who will be slaughtered like a sheep, who will be killed justice would be denied of him so then it was used by the early christians and we are saying this verse this passage taken from isaiah was taken from was one of the four poems in the book of isaiah known as the seven songs they are known as the seven songs and they describe jesus death and suffering which brought salvation. So it does make sense that members of the early church taught about Jesus' death and resurrection. And it does make sense that we see the eunuch uh, uh, reading this scripture because it is what Philip used as a starting point when preaching to him. And there is also the, the, a good example is the line which says, as a sheep led to the slaughter. It's a good example of Jesus' death. That re refers to Jesus' death. And also, this uh, passage refers or describes Jesus' resurrection. We are told in the last line of the passage, make sure that you go back and read the passage, my dear Elena, in Isaiah 53, verse 7 to 8, so that you can make sense of all these points. We are told at the end of the passage that his life is taken up from the earth. And this is the concept of resurrection. And then also, while the story reveals about the way members of the early church spread their gospel or they spread their faith is that baptism was a requirement for new converts. You, you will take note, my dear Elena, in almost all the accounts, in stories that we've covered and stories in subsequent accounts, we see that baptism is a requirement for new converts. I've already mentioned that baptism is necessary for every Christian. Why? Because it's an outward sign of inner cleansing. It makes us see that, oh, so-and-so has indeed repented. But it begins with the repentance. Then it's an outward sign for inner cleansing. 
And then we also said that water symbolizes purity. So then baptism was a requirement so that they get purified from their sins. It is for that reason that we see in the story that Philip, uh, that the eunuch insists on being baptized. And then lastly, my dear Elena, what the story reveals about the way members of the early church spread, spread their faith uh, or spread the, the gospel is that all Testament scriptures were relevant even to non-Jews. Old Testament scriptures were relevant even to non-Jews. And Old Testament scriptures are relevant even to us because we are non-Jews. Why do we say that? The eunuch is reading a scripture from prophet Isaiah, which is an Old Testament scripture. But it's relevant to the eunuch because it describes how Jesus was, uh, was, was crucified. And Philip uses it as a starting point for his message, which means that Old Testament scriptures are relevant to us even today as Africans. So that is what we had, my dear Elena, for, for, for what uh, the story reveals about the way members of the early church spread their faith. I have this assessment question for you, my dear Elena. Please make sure that you work on it. Uh, it's an evaluation question, as you might recall. The question reads thus, do you think pastors today should interpret, should interpret scriptures for believers. It's as easy as that. Give reasons for your answer and show you have thought about different points of view. But what I want you to take note of, my dear Elena, is that the question has this key word, pastors today. So this question requires you to be relevant to what is happening today because most of you have a tendency of going back to the story. Yes, you can use the story of the, 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 the Ethiopian eunuch, uh, but you can only use it as an example. But the question doesn't require you to focus on the Ethiopian eunuch, but it requires you to tell us of what is happening today. Should pastors interpret scriptures? If yes, if, if yes, why? If you feel like they, they shouldn't, why? Justify your responses with practical examples. I hope you will do well as you work on that question, my dear Lena. We have come to the end of our lesson, my dear Lena. Let me just give you just a brief conclusion of what we, we, we went through. Uh, we, we first introduced our lesson with a background of Ethiopia. And then we moved to the account of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. And then we, we looked at the significance of Philip's encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch. And then we looked at characterization, where we had Philip and the eunuch. And then we looked at the lessons drawn from the story. And then lastly, we discussed what the story reveals about the way members of the early church spread their faith. And for next lesson, please go and read Acts chapter 9, where we have uh, souls conversion, the Damascus experience, and also turn to pages 140 to 141 of your, of your textbooks. Thank you very much, my dear Lena. I hope the lesson was of benefit for, to you. Just so you know, we still have a lot from the religious education pool. Our pool never runs dry, so we'll be back with more lessons. Just stay tuned. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, uh, Tulsile, and you're right. Uh, they should stay tuned, uh, and I hope they did get, uh, they, this lesson was beneficial to them, like you Thank said. You. We're hoping to see you again for another religious education lesson. Definitely. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, like I had said, Form 3s, please stay tuned. Your lesson, your additional, uh, sorry, additional mathematics lesson is coming up next. We'll be right back after this. The family secret that seeks to end the marriage. Just tell me the truth, man. As your wife, I deserve that at least. This season, the forsaken son of a chief returns home on a personal quest that challenges him to confront old family secrets and discover uncomfortable truths about where his destiny truly lies. Standard Bank, proud sponsor of Ekaya. Standard Bank, it can be. Wash hands now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs> 
Hand washing is one of the best ways to keep from getting sick and staying healthy all year long. Hi viewers at home, my name is Professor Shabang. I am the presenter for your favorite health program, Better Health, Better Life. Thank you viewers at home for the calls and the messages and thank you Assorting TV for the great platform. Better Health, Better Life Season 4 is coming bigger and better. And now you have a chance to participate by sending a video of your view prior to the next program. On that note, we are appealing to all Emaswati, please, Stay at home, stop the spread so that we can save lives. Welcome back from Threes. This is Additional Mathematics with Mr. Sitembi Sotlamini and the topic is Vectors. Also joining us in studio are our sign language interpreters Linda Mamba and Tobile Fagudze. Sir, a very good afternoon. Good afternoon, Loretto, <laughs> and to the viewers at home, especially the JC learners. Okay. Um, thank you for coming back, by the way. <laughs> you may continue with your Vectors lesson. Thank you very much, uh, Lerato, maybe the first thing that we want to look at now are the objectives of the lesson. What is it that we expect the learners to know before uh, after this uh, after this lesson? Maybe the first thing is that they should uh, uh, be able to use uh, the different uh, vector notation that we have. They should be able to draw a vector. They should also be able um, to multiply a vector by a, by a scalar. They should also be able to calculate the magnitude of a column vector and lastly they should be able to identify parallel vectors that are scalar multiple uh, multiples of, uh, to each other now moving on with the lesson we want to introduce um, the lesson now vectors are journeys which take both uh, magnitude and direction so so this is a journey that has got both magnitude and direction and it can be represented by what we call line segments which uh, are labeled using uh, using what uh, arrows so that is the direction of the journey now i have here an example uh, of what we mean by a vector so here is the arrow there that shows there is the arrow that shows that this is a directed line segment now we also mentioned that uh, vectors uh, are, represent are represented by what we call a, a column vector. Now a column vector is going to be a column like that where we are going to have the, the x direction and the y direction. So the x represents what the horizontal movement and the y represents the vertical movement. Now what is also very important is that these mo movements they come with a direction. So for horizontal movement that is the x direction left is negative and right is positive now for the vertical movement now which is now the y direction going up is positive and then going down is is negative maybe i can give you just an example now of uh, a, an example of a column vector so we have an example here of the column vector here where we have got a five a negative two that is the five now is the x direction and the negative two is the y direction so it says that movement uh, in the horizontal direction is five units in the positive since the the, 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 the x here is positive so it is uh, going to the right and then the movement in the vertical direction is two units uh, in the negative because the y here is negative uh, uh, negative that is going going down now we shall be uh, illustrating how what we mean by these movements uh, that we are talking about Moving on now, we want to discuss uh, what you call vector notation. So vector notation now, what is it that we use now to, 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 to see that this is a vector and so on? Because remember in mathematics, there are so many things that we write. But then there are those things that are particular with a vector. Now we name a vector now using uh, small letters that are bolded, like uh, this A and this D and then this M there. 
So we, we, we use that. And then now we also use uh, underlined small letters. Now for your cases, most of the times DLN as will be you will be using the underlined one because uh, you are not using any any computer or any software, so you're unable to bold. So you'll be using uh, the small letters that are underlined to name your vectors. Also now we name a vector now by the end points here. What I have here, there is a point A here and a point B here. Now you can see that this point now, point A now, is at what we call now the tail of this um, vector. And then point B now is at the end of the vector, which is the destination or end point now. So we call it the head. So there is the tail and the head. Uh, we can use that or the starting point and then the end point uh, like that. So we, we can use these capital letters now to name the vector like uh, we have illustrated here to say this is vector a b and then the arrow now is going to move there is the arrow above the capital letters which moves from the start point to the end point that is from the tail to the to the head so that now we can name a vector now we've mentioned four things now we can use uh, small letters that uh, are bolded we can use capital letters that have got an arrow and then we can also use uh, what we call here a column vector and then lastly, we can use a small letter that is underlined, a small letter. So those four things now, we use that one. But I must emphasize that for your cases, most of the time you're going to, for the small letter, you're going to use the underlined one because uh, you are able to do that now with your your hand. Now moving on, um, let's uh, discuss now what we call uh, drawing vectors. So to draw a vector now, remember now we've mentioned now the tail and the head so that now to say the movement now that is uh, uh, from the tail to the head is horizontal first then vertical we shall illustrate that and then as mentioned we say that positive is right and negative is right when we are moving in the horizontal and then for vertical uh, up is positive and down is is negative maybe you can look at examples now just to illustrate what we we have just uh, discussed now to say now we can use uh, maybe this first vector now to draw a vector like this one now. This is vector AB here and vector AB we are given that it is negative 3, neg uh, negative 3, sorry, negative, uh, sorry, negative 2, 3, like that. That is to say now since uh, that x value here in the column vector is negative, you must move now to the left. Like we are, we can demonstrate here, so that is to move now from this start point now a we are going to move negative two steps to the left negative two steps to the left and then now move positive because uh, y here is positive it means we are moving up positive y one two three so there you are so that is uh, as is as light and then of course we are going to put the arrow now and the arrow now will show that we are moving from a we are moving from a to be like that. So it's very, very important uh, to note that the direction, when it's negative, uh, you move to the, to, the, to the left now for the horizontal movement. And then when it's positive, you move, uh, uh, for, 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 for the y direction, if it's positive, you move up like that. Now the same thing happened even with this uh, vector CD here. Vector CD is two, negative three. So uh, it's supposed to be two, negative three, like that. Um, so we can draw that vector now, maybe to, just to illustrate with that one. If you draw that one, let's say now this is a, a maybe we, we, we need our, the, the vector CD, it's two negative three. So we can, we can, we can have a point here and, uh, and name it what? Uh, C here. Now C, because X is positive, you're going to move one, two in the, in the positive uh, x direction and then in the negative we are going to move three one two three so this is going to be your point your point d there and then now we are going to join using a straight edge of course so i was just illustrating now to you, you remember to include the arrow now to to demonstrate that we are moving from c to d and then now we also have uh, the vector three three here which is c you can see the C is bolded here. We can see from there that it is, uh, it is, uh, it is a vector. It is three, three. So you can see from here, moving from this point, one, two, three, and then uh, to in the horizontal axis, positive three, and then positive one, two, three, uh, in the vertical direction. 
which is the, the y direction so that you can see from here that you started the movement there and then you you moved uh, and then you moved up like that so that this is one two three steps in the x and then also three steps in the y and then there is also the column vector d here which is negative three zero now you can see here that uh, you starting there this is your start point there which is uh, the, the vector we are starting and then now what we notice now is that in the y direction now it's like there is no movement now so zero movement so the only movement is in the x direction because y is zero so we are only going to move negative three steps now in the x direction one two three like that so that's very very important to note so that now for a vector the line segment the line segment always has an arrow in the middle like we have demonstrated in all these uh, in all these uh, vectors that we have drawn now for us to see that this is a vector we must see the arrow now moving on we want to discuss now what we call the magnitude of a vector the magnitude of a vector is the length of the vector that is to say the distance between the endpoints like we can look at this example here we have got this vector this is the vector that we'll be talking about vector a b there the endpoints are a and b of course so the endpoints are a and b so this is the vector that we want to find the magnitude of so so the magnitude of a vector is written as the the absolute value this notation is say with the absolute value now of the distance between of the vector a b so that is the magnitude of vector a so we we also use if the vector is we use this notation we are going to use uh, that absolute value notation with the a that is underlined now there and then so that is uh, that is how we we, we, we write uh, the, the the magnitude that the notation part of it and then now since now if you look at this now to find the magnitude that is the length of this one here you can see here that uh, uh, what we have here is a is a right angle triangle and then now uh, just to revive your memories we know that if you want to find the length now of a um, a right angle triangle we use what you call now pythagoras rule and then we are going to apply that knowledge even here to say now you can see here that this is the longest side because pythagoras is saying the square of the longest side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides uh, so that is uh, that is your pythagoras rule but then now we are generalizing to say for a vector which whose uh, directions are x and y here that is the, the general form of a column vector so that the magnitude now uh, I've also written the notation there is going to be that is the length of the longest side here which is AB in our case we're using AB is going to be x square the square root the square root of x square plus uh, y square that is the sum of the square root square root of the sum of the squares there so that uh, there you use this formula to find the magnitude of any any vector so that is it and also note that you, this formula is from a column vector x, y. So the notation is very important. Now we, are, we want to look at uh, examples now where we are calculating the magnitude. So the instruction is that calculate the, mag the, magnitude, uh, calculate the magnitude of the following vectors. The vector a, b is going to be 3, 5. And then now, as mentioned here, there is the formula that we are going to use there as written now to say the magnitude is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares x squared plus y squared and then from there you can see that uh, uh, our x is equal to 3 and then uh, our y is that 5 there which is 5 and then we substitute in this formula to say this is going to be 3 square there uh, 5 square there so the square root of the 3 square 3 square is going to be 9 uh, 9 there and then 5 square is 25 and then now 9 plus 25 is going to be 34 and then if you find the square root of 34 now the full calculator display is going to give us uh, this figure there so it's very very important to write the full calculator display before rounding off and then now after rounding off here this is uh, rounded off to two decimal places or rather three significant figures so there you are and then we can also look at another example now we want to find the magnitude of this uh, vector here vector a as given there and then vector a here from the grid you can see the first thing that you need to find is what you call the column vector for this one to say now from this end point uh, so sorry from the starting point to the end point there 
we are moving two steps in the x direction and one step there. Hence, we have this uh, uh, column vector. There to say column vector, so to say the vector A is 2, 1. So therefore, the magnitude there, I've written the notation there, our x is 2, so we're going to have 2 square there, and our y is 1. We're going to have uh, 1 square. Hence, 2 square is going to be 4, and 1 square is 1. Hence, 4 plus 1 is 5. The square root of 5, the full calculator display is going to give us 2.36067975. That is the full. You start there now. You must have the full calculator display before rounding off. So if uh, rounded off this one to two decimal places or three significant figures. So I'm sure you can now follow how you find the magnitude. With this, you can find the magnitude of any, of any vector. Let us move on now and discuss uh, what we call multiplying a vector by a scalar. This is, uh, what do we mean by multiplying by a scalar? Maybe that's the question that is uh, uh, ringing in your mind right now. This is how many times a vector is repeated or multiplied by itself. You can name the scalar K. That means K represents any scalar which might be positive, negative, a fraction. But most important, the scalar cannot be zero because you know that uh, when you multiply anything in mathematics by zero, it's going to be zero. So hence the emphasis that uh, this scalar should not be zero. So we can show scalar multiplication in two ways using what we call column vectors and also using line segments. So at this stage now we want to look at uh, a few examples now to demonstrate. We are given that uh, there is the vector m here. I'm sure you can see it's bolded. m is 2, negative 3, and then s there, 1, uh, one positive 2 there. And then vector q is going to be a plus 2b, like that. So you are to find 3m, negative 2s, and then also 3q. Now 3m here, we have got, it means now there is 3 multiplying vector m there. So we have got the 3 here, and then this 3 multiplies both the x and the y values now in the column vector. So that 3 times 2 is going to be 6, and then 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So to say m is repeated 3 times in length, that is our k is 3. So you can see that this 6, negative 3 is 3 times this 2, negative 3, like that. And then now we also have negative 2s, like that, and then here is the negative 2 multiplying the column vector. Uh, s there, as you can see. So negative 2 times uh, negative 1. Remember we said the 2 multiplies all the values inside the column vector. Negative 2 times uh, negative 1 is going to give us positive 2 and negative 2 times 2 is going to give us negative 4. So we are saying here s is multiplied twice in the opposite direction. You can see that uh, the directions are opposite here. In this case we have got negative. Now here is positive. Here positive, then negative. It means now the direction is in the opposite. And then hence our k is going to be negative. It means therefore if uh, the k is negative, the, the, ve uh, the vectors are going to be in opposite directions. Now the last examples that we, we the last example that we, 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 we had there was 3q is equal to that. It means the, the 3 multiplies, multiplies the, the vector, the vector q there, and then Q, remember we said Q is what? Is A plus 2B. Now the 3 multiplies everything. We've got 3A. 3 times 2 is 6. Hence our K is going to be 3. I think at this stage you are ready to also see now this by means of what you call line segments as mentioned. The vector 3M, remember, uh, the vector 3M there, uh, just from the previous slide there, M we said is the vector 2, negative 3. So we are using the same 2, negative 3 there to multiply it by 3 now. So this is saying now, this is the vector, the vector m. So if you are multiplying the vector m, it means, remember, if you look at vector m here, you are moving two steps in the x direction and then three steps in the y direction. If you are multiplying, it means even these steps that we are going to do there, we are going to multiply the x steps by 3. If you might, 3 times 2 is going to give us uh, 6 and then these the y direction is negative 3. You multiply that by 3, it's going to give us negative, negative, uh, uh, negative 9. So that now, this is the vector 3m that we have drawn. Remember, we said 3 times these 2 here, we are supposed to move 6 steps. So 
one, two, three, four, five, six steps in the x direction, and then in the y direction, you are going to move negative nine steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like that. So that now you can have the vector 3m like that as we have drawn it. And then remember, there is the arrow there. And then you can see from this vector, I partitioned it into three parts to say each bit here represents m, each bit represents m, each bit represents m. And if at this three, these m's here are going to have 3m. So hence now, we have multiplied this vector m by the scalar 3 there to, to get this speaker, this speaker vector, which is 3m like that. Now, we also looked at the vector uh, negative 2s. S here is what? The tail is there. It's going to be what? Uh, negative 1, uh, positive 2. This is negative 1, positive 2 steps. Now, means x is negative 1 and then y is positive 2. You multiply... You multiply then s by negative two. Remember negative. We 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 started by saying this. Uh, there is the two. It means it's going to be two times this vector. But then now in the opposite direction, like we have uh, demonstrated here, we can have the vector here. Let, let's say it starts here. Now uh, negative two one two uh, because it's going to be negative two in the x because I'm multiplying by negative two and then. Uh, our y, uh, our y, uh, let's say you are just multiplying the, it's going to be uh, the, that 4 there. But because they are in the opposite direction now, we reverse the arrow there to face that direction. So to say that if this is vector s, then this is negative 2s. Look at the arrows now, they are in opposite uh, directions. So that's how we, so indeed vector s is two times. Because you can see that these two vectors, they are two times vector s. But then the only difference is that these two vectors are in the opposite directions. So it's very important, therefore, to note that if uh, our k is negative, the vectors are going to be in the negative, sorry, in the opposite directions. The next thing that we want to discuss now are what we call equal, equal vectors. Equal vectors have got the same magnitude and same direction. Now, as an example, we have got this diagram here, which is a parallelogram, parallelogram A, B, C, D, like that. In this parallelogram, I'm sure you still remember that in a parallelogram, the opposite sides, the opposite sides are parallel. Now, I can show you the opposite sides here. This side AB is opposite the side DC here. So AB is opposite uh, is opposite to the side DC, and also the side BC is opposite to the side AD like that. Now, in a parallelogram, we expect that the sides that are opposite to be equal. Now, you can see from here that uh, AB is indeed equal to DC. In that, uh, if you want to move from A to B, in the X direction, you are going to move one step. And then in the Y direction, we are going to move how many steps? Uh, three steps there because it's one, two, three like that. The same thing even with vector D, that side. You move one step positive step in the x direction and then how many steps three three steps now in the in the y direction hence these two vectors are equal the same thing with vector bc vector bc and vector ad like that it's only the x direction only we are moving one two three four steps in the x and the same thing within this one we're moving one two three four hence they are they are equal so i think that's uh, that is the point that is driven here to say the same magnitude and then same direction. So even the arrows uh, are showing that. So they've got the same direction and then, of course, the magnitude is, is the same. So that's what we mean by equal vectors. They must face the same direction. And then now, the next thing we want to discuss before we move further is what we call now parallel, parallel vectors. Now, parallel vectors are if one vector can be expressed as a scalar multiple of another, we shall demonstrate what we mean by that. There must be a scalar multiplication k, which could be positive, negative, but never zero for the reasons I explained before to say if it is zero, then it cancels everything. Everything becomes zero. Now let's look at an example maybe to illustrate what, what we mean by a scalar. Now suppose we've got the vector f here. I'm sure you still note that it is bolded to show this is a, a vector. It is negative 3, 2, and then vector G is 4, negative 6. 
Now, the instruction is to show that the two vectors are, are parallel. We are to show that these two vectors are parallel. Now, to show that now, it means one that these vectors now are scalar multiples of each other. And then we need to prove that. Now, if you look at uh, vector G, vector G is 4, negative 6 there as shown. Now, if you factor out uh, negative 2 from that vector, inside the vector you'll be left with uh, negative 2, 3. And then negative 2, 3, as shown here, happens to be the vector F. So you can see that this negative 2 multiplies what? Vector F here, which is inside here. Then you can see from there that G is equal to negative 2F, which means that now uh, vector G is a scalar multiple of the vector F. Then the, our K happens to be what? Negative 2. Hence, the two vectors are said to be parallel because we've, we're able to find a scalar, which is a negative 2 in our case now, which uh, makes uh, the, the, the vector the vector G to be a scalar multiple of the vector F. So that's how we show. So it means so long as we are able to find the, the scalar, then you, these two vectors are going to be parallel. And then another example now also illustrating parallel vectors. Now suppose now you have got this vector AB which is given as A minus 2B and vector CD which is given as 4A minus 8B like that. Show that the vectors, you have to show that the vectors are, are parallel. It means therefore we must be able to find a scalar. Now if you factor out, factoring out 4, then the vector CD, the vector CD is going to be you take out from the vector CD, which is uh, 4A minus 8B. If you take out uh, 4 there, inside here, which is red here, this is vector AB, if you can see, because vector AB is A minus 2. Now, we then express vector CD in terms of AB, so that now vector CD is going to be equal to 4 times, 4 times vector AB, because this is vector AB like that. Hence, the two vectors, we say they are parallel because there is a scalar, uh, that we find there to be 4, this scalar 4, and then the vectors are in the ratio 1 is to 4, meaning CD is 4 times the vector AB, like that. Now we have come to the point where we need to summarize the lesson because we have touched on all the things that we, we, we planned to do. Now a vector can be named as a bold, small letter, or underlined, small letter, we can also use capital letters now, of course, with the arrow, and then we can use a column vector. Now, also very important that a vector is drawn on a grid or squared paper so that we are able now to, to count the number of steps. And also remember to put the arrow now, which is the arrow now is telling us which is the starting point and the, the end point. And then the magnitude of a vector, we said it is the distance between two end points and then to calculate the magnitude we use the formula here which is uh, x squared plus y squared that is the square root of that and then we said equal vectors have got the same magnitude and direction and lastly we discussed that two vectors are said to be parallel if one vector can be expressed as a scalar multiple of the other okay so i hope you you were able to follow everything in the lesson here now we are in a position to do anything that uh, is given in, in vectors now with this lesson. I hope you'll be able to apply what we learned today with me. I think uh, it has been a good lesson. It has. It has been a great lesson. Um, thank you very much, sir, for being with us today. We're hoping you're going to join us again next time. My pleasure. <laughs> okay. Um, viewers, um, goodbye and thank you for watching. I will be back with my colleague Nogwazi Lamini. We'll be back after this infomercial. Wash your hands for 20 seconds, just like Elmo. In the kingdom of Eswatini, we learn from home because of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
through social media platforms and television. The government provides us with subjects and teachers of grade 7, form 3 and form 5. Watch Home Study on channel 286 on DSTV or channel 02 on Ginger. Or else watch live on Eswatini TV YouTube channel. A very warm welcome back to our viewers. Unfortunately, that was the last lesson for the day. It's been a very, very long day. And we actually do apologize for the technical issues we've been having throughout the day. Lerato? Um, I'd also like to say goodbye to the viewers. Um, and please, can you give us tomorrow's timetable? All right, grade sevens, form threes, and form fives, this is what your day looks like for tomorrow. It's a Thursday, and we're hoping that you will be ready for it for more learning. From 2 p.m. until 2.30 p.m., we have science for the grade sevens. From 2.30 p.m. until 3.08 p.m., we have literature in English for the form threes. From 3.08 p.m., to 3.45 p.m. we have religious education for form 3. From 3.45 p.m. to 4.25 p.m. we have physics for form 5. And the last lesson for the day from 4.25 p.m. until 5 p.m. we have biology for form 5. View at home. Also, we have our YouTube and Facebook platforms where we are live from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And do not forget to subscribe so that whenever we are live, you get a notification. We also have a WhatsApp number which pops up from time to time on your screens during lessons. Well, from me, Nogwazi, and the production team, it's goodbye, good night, enjoy your day, <laughs> stay safe, bye. Bye, guys. The family secret that seeks to end in marriage. Just tell me the truth, man. As your wife, 